All right, there we go. Three past the hour. Why don't we go ahead and get started? So today it was suggested that we focus heavily on extensions, since it's such an important topic. So we're going to skip all the usual administrivia and jump right into it. Now, in the effort or in an effort to try to have me as sort of moderator of the phone calls to try to not influence people, um, it was suggested that maybe someone else could drive the discussion in terms of the, the proposal that's out there for extensions. And Dan gladly <laughs> volunteered to do that. Um, so Dan, uh, do you want me to share or would you like to share the screen? Uh, could you share the screen? It'll just make the recording easier. Okay, sure. So I assume you want to jump to this right here, right? I do, yes. Okay, go All for right. it. Thank you very much. So I'm uh, temporarily wearing the Clemens hat here um, okay. and uh, trying to address some of this uh, with the conversation that I've been lurking on for the last five weeks, I think, about this topic, uh, which is really sort of how do we see extensions working and, and what are the kind of the pros and cons of that? And I think this slide does a good uh, job kind of summing up the sort of ways that we could structure extensions and the, the ways that they would look within our spec itself and highlight some of the pros and cons of each approach. I think the first bullet is self-explanatory. It's that semantically there's no difference uh, on the two locations. So uh, that where, where this extension, where this piece of data is specified in this case, uh, a bag with extensions and then com example extension and some value, or just at the root with some label and some value. Uh, semantically, there's really no um, meaning uh, defined by either of those locations. Uh, but then uh, the, the next thing that kind of drives that is that all the data that's in whatever these, uh, these extensions are should be available to consuming apps regardless of, of whether we're using raw, which would be kind of on the left, or structured HTTP. Uh, the, the interesting things to look at or in this context are what these look like if we map these to HTTP headers. And in this case, HTTP is just an example. It's not saying that's the only thing we're gonna do, but it's not a bad example in this case because it brings up some interesting points. The first is that what these look like when they're kind of flattened out uh, is that that extension uh, piece kind of takes on like a, a dash sort of name. So in this case, C dash extensions dash whatever that extension's name was. Um, and this kind of leans towards the, what was done with, with HTTP with the X dash extensions that have long since been abandoned um, and that wasn't necessarily a successful foray uh, down that sort of extension path uh, concept. So it's something we kind of want to be cognizant of. And as we look at these examples, especially the one on the right, what kind of stands out to me is if our intent with extensions is to kind of open up a way in the future where we're going to start to ex figure out more of what is necessary within our specification over time. Some things might graduate from being extensions themselves into being part of our spec. Uh, and this makes a concrete example of what that would look like is if some label was just an, some, some, some extension I was using in my service or application or whatever. Um, and then it becomes, we decide maybe it's something location based, maybe it's something else. We decided something important enough for events to actually go in our specification. Then we introduce it in something like 1.1 or some later version of the spec. Uh, you would actually be breaking code when you deploy that if it was uh, mapped in the first way. So if it's something that's gone from ex extensions in a path underneath that to something that now is part of our spec, like as we roll that out, which is not going to be a clean cut for any of us, we're really going to kind of run into some, some issues about versioning. Um, and part of my concern with that is that if, if version 1.1 of our spec added that some label, whatever this extension happens to be, there would be no code changes. Uh, so it would just work. Like if we at all, if people, if half the industry had started using the same sort of extension piece, the same spec, the same, or the same label, uh, then all of our code would just continue working even when we, when we rev the spec. Um, otherwise, we would have a breaking change because now CE-extensions-com example extension would no longer be the name. You know, it would just be CE-com example extension. Uh, so that, that kind of concerns me quite a bit. Uh, I think this is a fairly concrete case of it. 
Uh, but I think this kind of leads to a broader uh, discussion of, of what exactly we want to set as our goals, uh, both for the spec and for kind of our future of this. Um, my, my goals, frankly, are really to kind of uh, have us have as simple of a specification as possible and wait until there's really well-defined sort of acute need to start adding more to it. Um, it's, it's very tempting to kind of build in unlimited extensibility at first without, uh, without you know, feeling the pain of walking that back down. And I'm, I'm just concerned that if we do something like the, 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 the COM example in this, that it's going to be more complicated for tooling, it's going to be more complicated for uh, port for versioning, and that we're going to, going to kind of drift into a place where we go from this, what we have now is actually a very simple, very kind of pure sort of thing. And I know it, it can't stay that simple forever, but um, I'm a little nervous about us trying to plan for stuff without concrete needs that in some ways kind of don't, uh, don't express themselves yet. And this drifts, I think, uh, to a, a little bit of a bigger sort of conversation about, uh, which is kind of mentioned on the next slide, about uh, how extensions really need to work at all. Um, and this part is what I'd kind of like to discuss a little bit more here today. I think a few of us uh, in this group, and I myself being one of them, have kind of, uh, and I was probably the last one to make this journey, um, have kind of moved to this idea that having uh, classifications in bags uh, is, could be causing more trouble than it's worth. Uh, you really have to think about what goes into which bag. And if we're doing this, we're kind of, you know, we're really kind of planning for a future that we're kind of uncertain of. I think a good example here is that, uh, you know, the semantics of an attribute are defined by the spec, not its location in the serialization. Whereas when we have a version for our spec, which we do, we already know what's in the spec, and then we can tell that anything that's not in that spec is, is an extension. Like that's already, you know, done and dusted. And it's easy to do that with the, with the spec we have in draft today. Uh, the next would be that really the producer is what knows what those attributes mean. Uh, it, it doesn't know how the consumers will use them. It just knows where to put those. So uh, here's where the classification and bag thing gets complicated is does the producer need to know what the consumer is going to be using these for? And does it need to decide if it's going to put uh, uh, values in an identification versus a correlation versus a logging or a debugging bag? And if a value is going to go into multiple of these, does it need to put them in multiple? And then that kind of raises a bigger problem of if it puts it into multiple, what happens as those things change over time or, or because of bugs fall out of, uh, out of sync? you know, and we kind of don't have a single source of, source of truth anymore. So I think the proposal here is to just say no classification uh, or bags at all, that all extensions are serialized in the same way. Um, and that that kind of just, it's, it's a simple model. It's not perfect, but at least it, uh, it kind of punts on, you know, us kind of having a, a make commitments right now that we don't know where they're going to lead in the future. Okay, anything else or should we open up for questions? I think it's discussion time. Well, I have my first coffee, sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right, any questions, comments? So I have a question here. I think here we are suggesting, you know, like two, so are we talking about serialization? Or are we talking about, you know, uh, the format of any attributes? So I think we need to separate these two. Uh, serialization, right, will apply. We have one way to serialize it. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of format the attribute it is. So that's serialization. And for the attribute itself, looks like for uh, extension, we there are only two options. Either we put everything in the extension back or we put everything at top level. And then of course, there's a third option, which is, you know, we classify the different uh, um, different things into different um, classification bags, right? So it's, I think there's three options. Um, I can understand, you know, if we put everything into extension, and uh, you say if later, if that, um, and that um, is an attribute is promoted to be in the spec, then there's a, uh, then, you know, we take it out, there's a backward compatibility issue. Um, so it looks like 
put into like I think the inclination is put into everything into one big bag um, has that issue right um, but I'm thinking you know for the I would like to um, open up for discussion whether we it's good to have you know a different classification um, um, bags uh, I think you know for that for the issue it looks like you know if we have multiple uh, classification bags uh, you are concerned that people is going to put the same information in different bags, but I'm thinking you know uh, it should be only in one bag. If those those classification are defined well, then you know the event producer will know um, where to put that. Uh, it has nothing to do how the event consumer use it. They are two separate uh, entities. We should not mix them together, but. Uh, how to do the classification, I think, should be from the event producer's point of view. You know, what kind of information um, to put into which bag. Um, I think, you know, um, put everything at top level, there will be, there are going to be a lot, right? Thousands of different informations. So it doesn't seem to be very good. Put everything on the one big bag. It's going to be like a, also thousands of under that one bag. And also, I, I think you already pointed out there's an issue with uh, um, backward compatibility. But if we put something into the different classification bag, there will be no backward compatibility issue because you know even you promote it, it's still going to be in that classification um, attribute. So you would say that it doesn't get promoted into a standard part of our spec, and now the now the uh, bag. The classification needs to have a specification for what fields are part of the spec in that classification versus which aren't. So I'm saying, you know, for example, if we have like uh, uh, a bag called uh, system information, right? No matter whether it's in extension spec or it's in the um, main spec, it's, it's all system information. There's no need to, you know, remove any tag or add any tag. It's the same thing. Well, but how I mean, how you serialize but, it? But if we promote, if we have something in a classification and we promote it, does that mean that now that classification needs a spec of what is part, needs a list of what is part of the specification that goes in that classification? And you then can you not put things in there that aren't part of the specification or what? Like, because the thing with the classifications that I think we can do is that you can define your own bag, you can define your own extension and make it a bag if you want. It's just that that's not really part of the spec, you're free to do it though. And you're free to put limits on it. So how big it can be, how many records it can have, how the semantics of it work. Whereas like the thing that's kind of concerning me, and I mean, being a, like a lifetime messaging person, I come from a background where the publisher probably knew more about the message than than what we see nowadays in like in cloud messaging um, from like an MQ and, and TIBCO background. But I've kind of come to see a little bit differently that in when you look at eventing, it's more it's more subscriber driven generally than publisher driven. So I don't know if the publisher is really going to know about all the classifications and, and be able to respect them. So the producer um, knows the event the best, right? So the producer should know how to classify them. But the it event, doesn't. But the producer and consumer might not agree on what the classification means. It, it's okay. If the producer put the information into the a producer knows the event the best. So he put the classification, put some info, put whatever information into that classification category, right? How the event consumer use it, the event consumer has to look into those information to see which information you know he cares or she cares, and then which doesn't care. If he doesn't care, he just ignore the whole bag. If you know, if those information are what the consumer cares, then the consumer is going to decode, I mean, to decode that bag. But also, I mean, when you uh -huh. the actually same, there are many other okay, go ahead. The same thing can be accomplished though with a with your own bag, with your own root level extension, because the consumer has to know what they're looking for. And, and I think it's easier to just say anything that, when you look at the cloud events version, anything that's not in the spec, we know is an extension. So it, then it's easy to say, if I really only care about the spec, then anything that doesn't match what's in the spec, I don't need to look at. Or if I really care about something called some field, I, I know that it's there because 
I, I don't see what the classification buys us other than more categorization and complexity. And considering how long, how long it took uh, to agree on what we have already, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to agree on what these classifications are. So, but then so, it, it seems like this is the best of both worlds, right? Because anyone could make their own bag um, if, they, if they wanted to go that route. We want people to do that, yeah. But we want them, and, and if it's a successful bag, we can promote it in the future. And we can say, hey, you, this type of bag turned out to be really successful. So this should actually become part of our spec. And that's where things that you know, might be vertical specific uh, could actually kind of happen and graduate into our spec that I think would be a good idea rather than putting out a prescriptive, hey, we're gonna make these classifications and you have to fit into these classifications. It's just, I don't, you all and Clemens are all a lot smarter than I am, but I don't trust my own ability to see the future enough to know uh, what those classifications need to be. But once we put them in the spec, we're stuck with them. Yeah, the, yeah. Market, is, the market will tell us. As long as we create an opportunity for the market to start creating these, these classifications or these bags. Um, and I think the best way to do that is going to be to put it at the, at the top level. Um, we'll, we'll get a lot of great data from that. We'll probably be able to make more informed decisions. Yeah, I agree. I think we should allow, you know, bags at the top level um, because you never know, right? We, why should we put some restrictions, say, you know, either everything, you know, um, could, no bags are allowed. I think we should allow bags. And also, um, from, uh, also as an event producer, so if I see some bags, I see, oh, okay, that's, uh, that's where I should put my information rather than I just put into one big, you know, um, extension bag or just put one top level. I, I would rather see the, you know, there's a need, you know, for that um, classification than I put there. I think it's more clear. It doesn't hurt. I think it's better. Are there any also, yeah, oh. I would like to say there are other particles out there, standard particles that have bags. For example, there's a, there's, I think it's, a, I'm, uh, I forgot which one, okay. Um, but it has an application um, properties bag. That's a standard um, particle. So, and that may, there's several, many others. So why should in here, we should restrict it, say, no bags. Can I, cl can I clarify something? Seems like I'm not, I'm not sure if I, the proposal clearly my understanding from the discussion is we would just not allow uh, not allow not put any uh, first class bags for now but allow users to uh, create their own customized bags on the top level and uh, in the future if some bags are really popular we're going to promote it and the promote would basically be seamless because it's still basically the same place we just make it official. Is, is that a proposal? All right, I'll try to make that a little more clear, yeah. So no, no classification in the spec itself, but extensions could add a bag. Does that clarify it? Yeah. So, so I believe that the discussion was let the market decide. And I, my understanding is at least reading the comments that there are a lot of folks who would like a top level extension bag, at least for identification or something. Now, do they want it as a top level extension bag or do they just want the ability to have some sort of bag? Well, maybe we I'm, just just at the, I'm just looking at the group chat and it looks like yeah. there are lots of folks who seem to prefer that idea. And I guess I'm one of those in that camp also. So maybe we can hear from some folks who have um, can articulate the reasons for that. So, so uh, for, for my experience, like we, we, we came to this same problem with Keta. So what we did was we decided to let anybody add top level attributes and uh, when they wanted to, but we had strict policies and rules about handling of that data downstream. Um, and we also provide two extension mechanisms. We provide a tagging mechanism for simple classification tags, as well as what you call just general extension bags, if you will, which could have URIs identified them. And, but we had rules about if you place things at certain places, things could be stripped because we had the problem of 
people would want to add log data or big amounts of data. And for serverless, that's not a great thing. Um, so you want to, you do need top level data and the market should decide, absolutely. Um, but you need to have strict policies about handling and sizes of data and things like that. Yeah, I think, you know, if we would like to define some, um, some um, classification back in the main spec, I, I think definitely we should have rules, you know, how to handle that. Um, I agree. So, so my, my, main point, my main point is that I think of cloud events as defining the, the routing and some level of classification of the events. And I worry that the consumers or people that, people that are using it will start putting more data into the headers, into the cloud event, as opposed to the data of the event itself. And we need to, we need to provide guidance there to ensure that, that people put all of the event data down in data and not into all of these headers. I, I think that the default needs to be that event data goes in data. You're free to, to crack the data, especially if you're a consumer and you know what it is, but I think you've hit the nail on the head, which is that what we, we need to stress the kind of the routing aspect and the kind of minimalist aspect to, to make sure that we don't get into a place where we're talking about soap. No, no, no offense to anyone on the call. I'm sorry, I didn't think before I said that comment. In my, so, in my opinion, I, I, again, I, I think that we just need to get this out in a way that's flexible right now so that users can teach us about how to use this thing. Um, and I do like the proposal here about just Enabling people to put things at the top level. It could be a, their own bag. Um, it could be it could be anything and we could see what people are doing um, and Heck if they're putting too much if they're putting data in those headers that we think should be in The event uh, I think we should observe that and then and then move to solve the problem um, But as of right now, I, I, I guess my biggest concern is just moving forward and getting this out to the market and kind of being open to receive that data and open for users to teach us about this stuff. And I think this is a good proposal to help us move forward. So is there a reason that we can't move forward with it being in extensions? And the reason I want to push for this is because we cannot, like it seems like it's harder for us to move forward if it's an extension or if it's not in extensions than if it is. So like what, what is the reason that we can't go forward with it being in extensions? Like I also want to like just move past this I don't see why moving it to the, at the top level is the way to go forward. May I ask, are you, are you proposing that we don't let people have arbitrary values at the top level? Yeah. So then we can't graduate things out of extensions. We Unless can't we graduate. For extension. we, well, would, we would have a different process for graduating them out of extensions. We would have to define what they should be. So let me understand what you said. I believe what you said is you would like well-defined uh, bags at the top level, but inside those well-defined bags, the users can put what they want. For example, someone could put something like what Kathy is saying, identification label. So that is well-defined, but inside the bag, the, the app developer can put whatever labels he wants. Does that make sense? Uh, could you say that one more time? So what I'm saying is um, we define at the top level a well-defined bag. I like that idea that a couple of guys on the chat have said something like a system label, system information identification label. Now I, I understand the concerns of those who say there'll be thousands of, that, of them and then it loses its value. My take is there won't be thousands of top level bags. We define only like one or two or whatever is important. For now, at least the market seems to be saying something for identification. So at the top level, we define something called identification label, system information, whatever. And inside that, the app developer can put whatever labels he wants. Yeah, I would like to clarify why the reason is inside it. Um, you know, um, we cannot predefine those labels. So for different event source, you know, those labels will be different, but the bag will not change. It's all identification labels. For example, for an event source that, you know, and doing a motion detection, you know, the label could be something related to that address. 
but for a uh, uh, a event for like you know a uh, a storage a storage event source, the label could be a the bucket, okay. But but it will not be thousands of labels in that bag. It will be just a few because for a specific event, you know the the identification labels won't be huge, but because of you know different event sources, they have different you know labels. So the only way we can normalize it, we can you know extract the common part is you know some uh, it's called identification you know label bag, so people can put information there, and this is important because you know it, there are some the, each event producer they could have some additional information they would like to put there, on um, so that you know it's, it, it will be make it easier, make the consumer easier to get those information. Otherwise, if everything is in the data. Um, yeah, I, I completely it's agree with, with the encrypt, It's encrypted. Yeah, you know, it will be hard to, you know, it be a long producing a process to decode it, suppose, supposing right. it knows how to decode it, and then to extract those values. And then, but you know. When, when we look at something like the motion sensing thing, are you going to use that for routing? But Dan, can, oh, no, we, no, let, no, can we let no, Matt no. speak? Because he was already. Yeah. Yeah, so I was saying, so I, I supported if you can't, you shouldn't just have block back box data. It's, it's useless to anybody. You need to have an identification system. We use, we use your eyes to identify perhaps a specification you could go to. So if this is sensor data or this is whatever data, you have an identifier that says this is, and, and your eye can be versioned. So as that data changes, it can be against a spec, it can be tracked. And so that you can go there to know how to parse this black box. You can't just have black box data. That's not it's not useful to anybody. I, that I, exactly. That is exactly. I think our schema already provides a way for you to tell what's in the data. And what I'm trying to figure out here is why does this, what is special about this, like sensor data or something else that makes it so it wouldn't go in the data payload and that we're putting it in a place where we're designing routing based on it? Um, so, so it's not just for routing purpose. Um, so Okay, so from my from my perspective, I would like to use it. This is not I'm not you know now I'm in the event consumer point of view. I'm not using it as a routing purpose. I'm more using it as to correlate the event with other events associated with the same application for that purpose. But you know, uh, I think you know in that. Uh, so so I, I would like to explore a little bit in the data field. So if the data is encrypted, okay. Um, I mean, how, how could the user, I mean, if it's encrypted, it will be hard, you know, to get all those information. Um, I think I, someone had this before, say, you know, it's better we put, you know, uh, at the, uh, you know, extract that out and put it into a, a, a bag. I think if someone has concerns say, if it's in the encrypted data, the that's data why, could be huge. That's why the proposal is to say that you can have arbitrary bags at the root level, but I mean, I think, I don't think any of us are in a position to say where, I mean, all, all of us are involved probably in serverless in some way. If, I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but if I knew where serverless was going to be in five years, I'd probably have a different job than I do right now. So, I mean, I don't think, I think it's very bold for us to say, we know how to do this classification. We know what people are going to use. I think it's much easier to say, let's, we, it's easy to change. It's easy to add. It's just hard to take away. And the proposal on the table is to say, Let's just let people add and see how it goes. And we can always, always add stuff into the spec later. And specifically, you mean right. let people add what? Uh, pro properties to the root level if that's what they want. Hi, um, I'm from the gRPC and protobuf team. And um, one concern that I have is that if we let people add key value pairs um, or uh, data uh, at the top level, what would happen is that we would have to actually marshal this entire data before we can decide what we want and what we don't want. Uh, instead, if you had like an extensions and then put the data that we want in there, then we can we can actually go in there um, and, and do that as a second level if you cared about any of the extensions um, and then marshal the sub data as we care about it. So introducing a level of nesting to here's the stuff that we care about and here's the stuff that, that's optional would I think um, uh, be a little bit more helpful. I actually think that argument plays very well to the fact that you shouldn't be putting arbitrary stuff outside of the data anyway. Um, <laughs> By arbitrary, so people are going to disagree about what arbitrary means, right? Yeah. Arbitrary to one person is essential app logic to the other. The point is, like, the point that I would like to make is that it's about, and, and, uh, 
feel free to interrupt me if I'm getting this wrong, but it's that we need to understand what kind of data will be, uh, like what kind of data are we expecting here? And if we're getting arbitrary data anywhere in the anywhere in the properties, then that's harder for us to do. Did I get that right, Kalish? Um, yes. Um, and also, like, if, if you want to version this, then every time we add a new key value pair to the top level, shouldn't it be that we have to bump the version up? Um, Only that, if it's part of the spec. Well, well, well let's be clear. In, in, let's, let's say in 1.0, uh, some label does not exist. But then 1.1, some label does exist. That's okay as long as some label is optional. If we want to make it required, that requires a 2.0. Uh, bump. Um, how then is that meaning conveyed? Like which label is is optional and which label is the, the required? Specific, the specification, uh, the spec itself tells you what's required versus optional. So in version 1.1 of the spec, we would have to say there's a new top level property called some label and it would be marked as optional. And that's why uh, 1.0 receivers should be prepared for extra stuff at the top level exactly for that reason. New things may get added to the spec that are non-breaking changes, which is why I said it would be optional. But it okay. would, but, so, but so basically like every receiver in addition to receiving the data, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm new to this. So sorry if I'm asking like um, dumb questions, um, no, no, but every, that means that every receiver that receives this data should not just have this data, but it should have an understanding of the spec that's defined outside the data it's received to actually make decisions on each of the key value. Um, can we encode this in, in, in some ways, what I'm suggesting, which is that if you had an extensions back, then then everything at the top level, you know it that that meaning is conveyed that everything at the top level is part of the spec. And does that make sense? I, I'm, 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 it's so hard for me to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> let, me, let me just say this. Uh, in my experience, it is very common for people in JSON to add new properties, especially at, at the top level. And I think it would be a mistake for a receiver to blindly drop them on the floor, especially when those exact same labels, when serialized as HTTP headers, will appear. So based yeah, upon whether you're in binary versus structured JSON, you may get different results as an application. I think the last five minutes of this conversation has drifted to us strictly saying we won't allow anyone to put anything at the top level, which is, I, I think that's extremely restrictive. Um, I mean, that's, I don't think that's the proposal that, that we're requesting, right? Like, at least from my perspective, I think if we, I if we allowed, exactly you said. no, uh, I think, that's I what think, I said, I said that. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> if, if you want to add key values to the top level, that has to be reflected in the spec as well. Like I, I, maybe I that's the same agree. thing, but yeah. Sorry. I think we agree that, you know, we do not put restrictions, say, you know, uh, you can only, you know, the format of the, of new properties, right? It could be, you know, uh, some label, it could be some bags. I think if we are putting restrictions, say, a, a lot of restriction, so how many people is going to use this? I, I think our, our purpose is we would like this to be, you know, to more people to use it, right? Right. So that's what I'm suggesting that the extensions um, sublevel could have that information. Then we're restricting what can go at the top level. Is is what you're saying yeah. is don't let people add anything to the top level. Yes. Uh, unless I, unless I wanna, that's that's approved that's by the spec. Not crazy. Like I don't want to I so don't want to like push if, everyone there right now. We should talk about it. But I want to say like that seems reasonable to me. If if we do that though, and I have a a bunch of customers using 1.0, and I mean, I actively have customers using our draft right now. I actually have actively customers using a 10 year old messaging service right now, which is a cloud service. And I have, I literally am spending half my day making phone calls right now to try and get them to upgrade because they're using 10 year old software. Okay. What do we do when we add 1.1? So they just won't get the, like their design, their, their software was designed just to ignore everything at the top level that wasn't explicitly listed in 1.0 or should we kind of push the industry to be prepared for other things at the top level so that you don't have the, the versioning pain that's that's naturally going to come your way because things will get added over time. 
that, that, that's the part that I think drove me the most towards this model is this notion of receivers blindly ignoring things at the top level, which is going to completely break an old receiver talking to a new producer. And the notion of when things do get promoted, people are going to have to change code, right? Because things are moving from inside the bag to outside the bag and then do consumers now have to put it in both places because they don't know whether they're talking to old or new consumers. I, those are the kind of things that, that really push me over the edge towards the model, even though I know bags tend to get people a, a warm, comfy feeling. And uh, it's, what's not about a warm, comfy feeling. it's not like, like, that's not the point. It's not like I feel better about this. It's that I know exactly where I know exactly what kind of data to expect at the top level. And if I'm, and if I want something in the extensions, I can go get it. So just to be clear, it's not about my feelings. Yeah, no, I understand. It's just, it's just, you, you, you can't know exactly, but that's the point, right? You can't know what you're going to get as a receiver because this, the producer could be on a How newer How does that version. work in any strongly typed language then? I don't understand. That's a, that's an engineering challenge that we all have to overcome. But what I can say as a middleware person is that my middleware is going to need to be able to pass stuff that's not in versions of the spec. I need to be flexible enough for that or none of my consumers can upgrade till I upgrade. And what we're proposing with this whole initiative is not a, a point to point, not a client server model. It's going to be very distributed. There's going to be lots of middleware. And if we back ourselves into a place where we make a strict statement that it's okay to ignore things that just show up, then we're going to have a, a painful time with versioning. So I think that um, the people, the, the JSON HTTP crowd has been very vocal here. And we have a few people who are trying to figure out how to map this to binary protocol. And I would suggest that Proto and gRPC are widely used in distributed systems and, you know, places where they have to deal with middleware. And other so, protocols like Thrift, yes. So like, I, I th I'd like to hear more discussion of the actual arguments against rather than reiteration of the um, arguments for. Okay. Um, First, I, yeah. think, I, I would like, I think the assumption that, you know, when we do the um, serialization, we have to remove the back name. I think that assumption, we need to discuss that. Because here you put the extension, a big bag, then you think, yeah, that's not useful. But if there are different bags, why do you remove this name? For example, if there's a, like a, the extension, it's not an extension, it's, it's called system info. Then, you know, in that system info, you have, you know, um, I just make it up, like CPU, uh, CPU, uh, whatever requirement. It might not apply to the event. But just that, why do you remove that system info? There's no need. So there's no upgrade. Either. Kathy, I think here, elaborate? because we are- I'm, I'm, Kathy, I'm sorry, I got to jump in there. I'm not sure I, I follow, and I hope, I don't think I'm the only one. What do you mean by remove the bag and serialization? Like for this example here, the bag does appear because the word extensions appears in there. So can you elaborate on what you mean by that? Oh yeah, okay. So I'm hearing that because so you know, when you uh, upgrade from extension to the men's bag, you know, the bag name is removed. For example, if the bag name is called system info or oh. identification label, then that's removed. So there's a backward compatibility issue. My point is that when you upgrade, there's no, there's no need to remove that because that's a that's a, is that's the attribute name. The system info is the attribute name. Oh, so you're suggesting that if com example extension were to be promoted, it would it, no, be no. A secret. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So when I say it's promoted, it's not promote this com example extension. It's promote this back attribute. This attribute is called just remove that extension. You know, just say call it system info. You are promoting the system info, not promoting any specific information inside that system info. It's all the same information. You are promoting that system info. That's the attribute. The, the format of the attribute is like a map format, right? The format and then in the specific, you know, value. So here is not, you know, this system info is not just one value. It could be, you know, inside it, it could be key value pair. So where does it live though? System info, are you saying it lives under extensions or are you saying it lives at the root or, or what? At the root, at the root. There's no, uh, I, I don't think that we need another level of, you know, 
just that extension keyword. We have different bags, right? You have system info. I will not see a lot, but you maybe have a few. Why you, there's no need to put another extension on top of it. And when you serialize it, you just serialize same as you know the event type or event event type or event time 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 or source, right? Just like the source info, people can put different source info there. We cannot predict what kind of source info will be put there. I, I, my take is that we do not know how, you know, we cannot predict future how people is going to, you know, the event producer is going, how they are going to, you know, um, use this. So I think it's more open, more flexible. I think more people is going to use it. If we put a lot of restrictions, say we cannot allow this, we cannot allow that, we only allow a single key value pair at the top level, at the root level, then the, we are going to, then there will be scenarios. People cannot use this spec. So Kathy, I'm, I'm trying to, to follow what you're saying. Are you suggesting that extensions should be serialized the same like, like all the other attributes at the top level or not? Yeah, yeah, but not call extension because when you call extension, it's a big bag, right? You call it, just give an example, say system info. That's easier for people to understand. Could you change this slide to like system info? And then on the right side, you say, you know, system info. Are, are, you, are, you, are, are, are you asking, it sounds info? like, uh, the, so can I interject one second? It sounds like the discussion is kind of what you're saying is what you don't like about some label in this is that it's a key value pair. Oh. Some label here just happens to be a key value pair. It can be whatever you want it to be. It's that value can be oh, yeah, another. Be yeah, like that. Exactly. So I'm, I'm, yeah, that's good. So I'm saying it could be key value pair or could be, you know, uh, like a system, a system, which inside it, there are other, you know, inside it is a bag inside it. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, something like that. I think that's it. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, you, you, the other you do not need to say system before you can just say whatever. Yeah. Okay. So I believe I what Kathy is trying to say is she wants a top level bag, something called system info, which I think makes sense. I'm fine with that. I, I think she wants the ability to add an arbitrary top level bag. Yes. It's not think, arbitrary. Well, I think, I think, Kathy, so I, I think, <laughs> let's just make sure everybody understands what Kathy's saying. So Kathy, I think what you're suggesting is that event producers should be able to allow, add new top level individual properties or even bags, structured data, whatever you want to call it, other things at the top level. Is that correct? Yeah, structured top level structures or top level key value pair. Right, and these, are defined, and, these are, and these are defined by the event producer, correct? Yeah, by the event producer. And then if we think it's, yeah, or oh, by, uh, uh, by this group, right? Just like we define this event uh, event type, you know, and then we define source, right? The right, source but, itself, the source right. itself, you know, could be a a bag, you know. I, I, you know, we need to take a look at the source itself. If it's a map format, it could be a bag too. Right. I just want to no restrictions. Say we only need one. We only allow one format, which is a uh, just a key value. That's it. I think you know we should allow you know key value. We should also allow a structured um, top level um, property. Hey, Kathy, when you say we, who are we? I think it's uh, this group, right? What, when we define this spec, so what restriction we put there? I, I think I, I'm, I think that I, I thought the, the discussion was really between whether we put whatever you said in our main spec or we allow users to or producers to define them arbitrarily. I thought that was the discussion. And when the JSON side says, I think we both agree we need that. I thought that this difference was uh, one side says we do not put that, those into the main spec. Okay, so and, let, me ask, let me ask Kathy this question just to get a little clarity. So Kathy, when you talk about the system info as an example, <clears throat> um, let's assume for a minute that system info is not defined by our specification. Are you suggesting that an event producer can add system info as an extension at the top level? 
Okay, so event producer can add, you know, um, system info or whatever other um, name that's more appropriate, you know, in at the top level. Um, okay. In the extension, uh, we can also define such structure um, at the in the main spec at the root level. Yeah. So, I, okay, my whole point is just we do not need to put any restriction on the format of the metadata, no matter whether it's in the main spec or it's in the extension, uh, or it's, it is an extension. I, 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 that's my whole point. We don't need to put any restriction there. And then when the, anything is promoted from the, um, from the extension, to the, when I say extension, it's not the extension back, okay. What I mean is anything is promoted for, uh, you know, from uh, not it, from you know, non man spec to the man spec, we do not need to add any extra tag, like an uh, extension, that keyword tag there. What is uh, defined, you know, in the non spec, if it's called system info, when we promote it, it's still called system info. So there's no backward compatibility issue. Yeah, that, fix the ver that fixes the versioning problems. Right. right. Um, so, well, so can hey, I Doug, ask, like, if, hey, 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 Doug, I, I think yeah. we have been going over this issue for months and we've just been going in circles and a lot of it's, you know, new, new people join the conversation. They don't have the context and they, um, they haven't been involved in the earlier conversations. I, I think we, I think the bigger issue is just, is the lack of decision velocity here. Um, and I think we should just, we should come to a vote at some point and figure out how we're going to get to a resolution, hopefully by the next meeting on this. And perhaps people could present for a minute or two and propose, you know, what, what they think and, and maybe we could just handle it with a vote. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see you present it, like this is, so we have a specification, right? That, ha, that is constructed with an extensions bucket. And there is a proposal where people have raised a, a, a value add to not having that. And um, there's been a bunch of discussion in the PR, and um, it sounds like you know we th there needs to be a defense of like the reasons why it is of value. Um, and like I feel like the conversation hasn't had that. Like there's been concerns raised about how this gets encoded in binary protocols, and maybe having a a presentation or, or multiple presentations. Like I think we talked through Kathy's concern where it seems like that's part, like that's now part of this proposal. So that's progress. But, you know, I think that there are people struggling to actually implement this in things other than JSON. Right, and then you had asked <clears throat> for people who were not, you know, like the gRPC and protobuf people to, to speak up and I don't think they got a chance to yet, but I apologize. I'm not still used to Zoom with their little hand thing. Vlad, I think you've tried to put your hand up. At least that's what it looks like. Yeah, I have my hand up. I would like to discuss a bit about uh, promotion and getting something from an extension to an official top level attribute. Uh, what does the group want at this? level as in do we want both forward and backwards compatibility what if i define a top level extension called tracing where i just put in a trace id and then the spec uh, comes up and promotes another official extension that is open tracing compatible and it's uh, span id and trace id how is that going to be handled and what do we want? How are we going to do this? What are the requirements for this? Because this is going to impact the having top level, random top level properties. Seems like we're taking what was supposed to be an extension and moving them into top level properties that are going to have to be namespace. But then again, we're still going to need code uh, changes because I'm obviously not going to put extensions as just extension. I'm going to put, say, company info dash extension. So I think we need to talk a bit about the promotion uh, workflow and maybe the encryption and signing. That the whole security thing has been continuously postponed for a last while. And especially in uh, Kathy's example, there were discussions about, okay, this shooting data, this might be mirrored 
into data, but data might be encrypted or signed or whatever. And the point was that extensions could be modified by middleware without actually modifying data. So adding extensions, I wrote a huge comment on that. Seems like these two topics, promotion and uh, encryption signing, whatever, have been a bit ignored. Are they worth discussing in this context? Because it seems like it's affecting this. Also, yeah, I do agree we kind of need to take a decision because this is affecting the SDK work and until we have proper working SDKs, we are not going to get any relevant workflows. It's obviously gonna, we're obviously gonna have more examples of usage once the SDKs are released. Okay, so we're running a little low on time here, and I heard a couple of different suggestions for topics to be brought up and for discussions. Glad you just had two, the, uh, the promotion discussion and then the encryption stuff. I'm not, I, honestly, I'm not quite sure about the encryption stuff in terms of how that 100% relates to this, but is someone willing to talk about those two issues? Because we talked a little bit about the, about the promotion already today. Um, but it was, it, was in fa it, was while it was bringing it up in favor of the proposals being shown here. Is there someone who would like to talk about the promotion issue, perhaps looking at it from the other side where a bag is necessary? For next time or for this one? I'm a, well, I, we only have five minutes, so probably not today. <laughs> for okay. next time. Yeah. Uh, I think we have a spec called extension.md that documents the what should be put into the main spec, what should be put into as an extension. We probably can start from there. If needed, I can leave that discussion. I just share that, that spec, and then people can comment on that spec. Well, I think that's something different. I think it's not just promotion. Well, I guess, no, yeah, never mind, it is. Okay, never mind. Okay, so, so Kathy wants to head up those, those discussions. That's fine. Now, Sarah had talked about other protocols besides yeah. JSON. Um, yeah, and I, I think Kelly yeah. from um, Clash from uh, GRPC Proto team. Okay. Has, yeah. And, yeah, hi, yeah. Um, in the next meeting, like one thing that we could do is, um, Let's let's actually have like um, I could I could take maybe five or ten minutes and put like two three slides on, on the problems that we're hitting up against a spec um, from a protobuf definition uh, perspective and also compare and contrast both of these options um, and see how that would look in the protobuf spec so that we can talk to some concrete details as to how this would look outside of the JSON land. Would that, that be helpful be, for this group? Yes, that would be very very helpful because a lot of people have, have said even on this call, he said they want to start with something simple and a way to actually need it. If you can give concrete examples for why things are needed or have to be a certain way, that's very, very helpful. So yeah. thank you. So what I do is um, I, uh, we look at both these specs, see how it would recommend. And um, we have um, a, a, uh, quite a bit of experience around protobuf and how specs evolve around that. So we can speak to that experience as well. That'd be wonderful. Great. Okay, uh, also, so, with, also with that, just a request, because um, I, I hear Rachel's and, and Sarah's and uh, Kailesh, I, I hear your, your points. Um, one thing that would be helpful to me personally is just if you can come up with an idea as to how to promote an extension to the spec if we keep the extensions namespace. Got it. Makes sense. I, I think if- I think if that's a fair question. I think that, that we would have to address that, so yes. Yeah. Addi additionally, maybe we could time box these presentations on the next call and then perhaps consider a vote afterward. Yeah, I was, I was going to suggest something along those lines, five to 10 minutes for each presentation and then plan on a vote. Even if we run out of time, we're going to take the last five minutes and vote one way or another. Um, <laughs> the other, but the, yeah, although I think that we don't like, let's give time to the new presentation rather than limiting that to 10 minutes, giving this one an hour. I, I understood. Like, yeah. I mean, um, I so for, the reason for, one was given so much time was because this is the only presentation or proposal that had been made. Otherwise, I would have given time for other people. The well, other we, thing we, chatted, say, uh, we chatted a lot about. Like, it sorry. seems like we might need two or three votes, uh, not in sequence, but it seems like there are a few different issues here. So I just want to flag that as. Well, I, I, I was going to mention that <laughs> between now and then, I'm going to try to work on exactly what we're voting on. Because as you said, there are many different issues at play here and it's not 100% clear, but it's on the same page about which issue we're talking about. So I'm going to try to get some clarity there before we actually vote, yes. Great. Yeah, so I think, yeah, I agree with Rachel. There are several issues, you know, looks like being um, discussed here. Uh, I think one issue is uh, today's discussion is, you know, um, 
what kind of, um, I think it's a format, right? Be allowed in the extension or in the main spec. And then another is how to promote this, right? So I think even for the first one, we have different suggestions. So I would suggest, you know, each person present the suggestion. I can present my suggestion. And then maybe there are other two suggestions I see. Why is everything put into extension back? And uh, the second one is everything top level. And, uh, but, and my suggestion is, you know, at the top level, but we allow, you know, different format. We allow key value pair, we allow bags. So we can probably present, each of us present the suggestion, proposal, and then people can vote. Yeah, so, okay. How about that? Yeah, so now we are mixing them all together, so people might not be clear what what well, is what. I still see confusion from the people. Problem is, yeah, the, the problem is, Kathy, some of these issues are very much sort of inter intertwined, and I'm going to try to work very hard to come up with the the exact statement of what we're voting on before next week. Because as Rachel said, we may actually have more than one vote. It all depends on how it plays out. The one thing I would really okay. ask of people, and this goes along with what I think Austin was asking for, which is rather than simply saying, you know, you want so and so for for well, when you give reasons for why you want so and so, please try to explain the technical reasons for why it, your life is like hard without it, or why it makes life easier with it, or something like that. Uh, because we, I've heard it over many times on this call, people want implementation experience for why we need to do something one way or the other. And so, anything you can bring to the table would be very, very useful in that respect. Okay. And with that, we have one minute left. I'm going to have to call it. Let me just go back and do the roll call if we can very quickly. Um, there's some, some typing in the back that makes it hard to hear. Uh, Rohit, are you there? Rohit, you there? Okay. Um, Chris Hansen, you there? Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, Chris. What about Eric Stahl? Or St Stolik? Or Eric Erickson? Eric Erickson's here. Okay, Rachel, I heard. Klaus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Louie, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, going circling back around. Eric, are you there? Stoic? Stoic? Cool. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, Rohit? Is there anybody I missed on the attendance? All right, cool. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. We'll talk again next week. week. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.